Hello everyone, welcome to one more video and today it's a very short video just showing how we can navigate using VOR stations and our CDI as known as Course Deviation Indicator and before I start just a few names that we need to have it clear so the first thing is that we're gonna be looking at the CDI that is course deviation indicator and should not be confused with the horizontal situation indicator that's another instrument that we can talk another day but it's different and the main difference between the horizontal situation indicator and the course deviation indicator is that is that the CDI doesn't show you your current heading for that we need to use a separate instrument in the case of this Cessna uh, it's this one that is the heading indicator so that being said uh, we can move to the next to the next part that is to learn a little bit about the basic functionalities of this instrument so having a close zoom here we can see that we have those orange flags here and this red and white flag here and those flags basically means that or the instrument is turned off or the frequency that we have uh, synchronized is not being is not valid or is not being captured maybe because we are too far away from this specifically VOR station and, and we also gonna have other two indications and to start, so let's select one VOR. I have a right here in the standby frequency the VOR of Bravo Charlie L Echo Oscar, Bravo Charlie Oscar, and when I press active, we can see that the the flag, the orange flag that we had here, is now gone, and it shows that we have an active uh, CDI. It's also important to not to make sure that the GPS mode is not activated since this instrument can also be used to follow a specific course uh, that is that's gonna be plotted in the GPS but today we, we just want to check how it works with EOR so we're gonna keep it deactivated we're gonna have the NAV mode only and in this mode we're just gonna check the EOR so uh, this instrument basically tells you your, what's your deviation from the course <laughs> so <laughs> that's the name of the instrument but we can also use it to localize ourselves and also to localize uh, to localize the position of the VOR station that we have selected so in this case how it would work so we can see that we are this bar is to our right which means that we are to the left of the course selected and the course selected we can see over here so our course is a little bit around uh, 10 degrees and, and we also have the flag 2 and this flag can also be thrown and let's see that in a minute so let's start turning it around and now we have synchronized it as you can see we have this vertical bar right in the middle and it's quite sensible quite sensible and each dot here also here and in this one each dot represents two degrees of deviation so and the maximum would be we have one two three four five dots the maximum would be 10 degrees of deviation and if this bar is beyond the this dot we just know that it's more than 10 degrees but we don't know how much more than 10 so that's one limitation of this instrument but so how it works now we can see that we have the flag 2 and we have the course uh, of indicated by this red by this yellow arrow that would be something around 70 degrees so that means that based on our current position if we would start flying heading 70 degrees of if we would start flying with 70 degrees of heading we would be 
following the uh, we would be following to the VOR in the in the course 070 so let's see that in a map what that means so here I have a map uh, let's suppose that we still don't know our localization and what we saw there is that we if we would be following from our current position if we would be going uh, heading if we would fly heading seven seven zero zero seven zero we would be going to the VOR Bravo Charlie Oscar so it means so we have let's use a different color Oh, actually, let's use this one. Seven zero would be something around here, right? Let's make something like that. That's supposed to be a line, and that seven zero. Okay, so basically what we know is that since we are two, that flag means that if we would be flying heading 070, we would be going directly to the localizer, to the VOR. So we just know that we are somewhere around this line over here, going in direction to, the, to this VOR. So that doesn't give our precise position but we can already use it to navigate towards a known point. But let's suppose that we want to know that we are flying, we don't know where we are exactly, and we want to locate ourselves. So for that, we're going to need to use the second CDI. So we already have a general idea of our localization, but we are not sure So how we can do it. So let's synchronize this other VOR that, I, that we know that I already pre-selected that VOR the frequency is 114.30 and let's see how the flag will change from from this off flag to active and now it's active so what we're gonna do is that we're gonna start moving the OBS knob by the way OBS stands for Omni, Omni Bearing Selector and let's start moving oh let's let's have a look at that so we have this, the same thing works for this one here two we have the flag two and as we turn now it changed to from let's keep moving and now we are getting here and there we have so we have something around one four zero which means that if considering our current position if we would be if we would start flying heading 140 we would be flying away from this VOR from the VOR Sierra Tango November in the in the course 140 so with this second information we can check we can know our precise localization the way that it works is that here we have here we have heading 140 so 180 140 would be something around here all right here would be 140 and the intersection of those two of those two Cursors should give our current position. Of course, that we are flying, and those instruments doesn't take into account our current heading. I mean, you cannot check our current heading just by using that position. So, to have a more precise orientation, we also have to take our heading. That in the case is one six zero, or actually one seven zero, and one seven zero would be something around here to this direction so using those two informations uh, we have our exactly our approximate position and also 
to where we are heading and having those two having this information we can fly anywhere we want and so basically to use those two instruments we we need to have a mental map of the area we are flying or to actually have a real map and know where are located the VRs that we are that we are synchronizing and we need to make a little bit of a mental work to figure out our exact position so now that we know our localization if we would like to fly a specific another course so if I would change here the course to let's say uh, to 090 let's check in the map that means uh, this means this this let's put here that would mean this specific course here all right so we can see that our position is to the right of the selected course and we can check that here in the instrument and because we have the this horizontal bar to our left so we would have to move our our heading towards the left and since we are with this current heading position we know that we, we would have to make a left turn to have to be able to intercept this course all right so we can we you can navigate uh, quite uh, we can you can you can navigate quite well but it's it's necessary to have quite some mental work and to have a general idea uh, uh, of the map of the area where you're flying uh, where the viewers are located so that's why maybe it's not so easy to use those instruments but they are very very complete and the final thing that I want to show you is that you can also use this upper CDI to make precision precision approach all you have to do is to select uh, iOS frequency here and we're gonna see that this horizontal bar will also be synchronized so let's for the case of this of our of this runway it's 190.30 and once I select this this orange flag will be gone which means that now we have horizontal and vertical guidance and that's exactly what we need to land and there is one other point is that once you have selected the, an iOS frequency you can change the you can play with the knob as much as you want but that will make no difference because the instrument will be already using the course of the corresponded correspond runway so you can you can change it but it will make no difference you always gonna it will always be giving you the reference to the runway and the way that this this horizontal bar works it's very similar to other iOS instruments so when it's above it means that you're flying too low or below the flight uh, the correct flight path and if it if the bar is below this this horizontal the center line it means that you're flying above the correct flight path so in an IRS up, um, approach you want to keep those both lines here centered the horizontal situation and the vertical uh, situation and uh, that's basically how you use both CDI so I hope I made a little bit more clear how to use those two instruments they are quite old-fashioned but you can navigate quite well with those and uh, without using GPS it's a lot of it gives a little bit more of work but you can also use it and for me it's personally very interesting to know how to use those old school old school instruments that some it's, it's still being used but nowadays it's more and more common to have a GPS or something more fancy like a Garmin 1000 or a Garmin 3000 something like that all right so thank you guys I hope it it helped and uh, if you like it please leave a like and if you can share with friends and uh, thank you so much see you in the next video bye bye